ladies and gentlemen, it's Blind Date. And here is your host, Miss Cilla Black. hoping for Mr. Perfect and here's the lad who fits the bill. His name's Mark and he's from Surrey. Come in, Mark. Good evening. Sit yourself down there. <coughs> oh, don't you look smart, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> now, you are a man of the 90s. That's what you've been described Yes, I as. believe so, yes. And you're not typical of a fella because you don't like football. No, hate football. <laughs> don't like it. And what else don't you like about the typical male? Because you don't go down the pubs drinking, <sighs> do you? Not really, no. I like weddings. <laughs> yes. Looking forward to my own one day. You are really? Yes. And you're the perfect man. I can't get over this. It, they tell me that you absolutely... You don't mind ironing. No, I love ironing. <laughs> I love ironing. Look at all the <laughs> And you cook as... It cooks as well. <laughs> I hope you've got some decent questions to ask our girls. I certainly so. have. I well, certainly fire have. Fire away with the first Thank one, you. Mark. Well, hello, ladies. Hello. Hello, Mark. Mark. Right, question one for number one. I know it sounds a bit odd, but I really fancy the actress Sue Pollard. <laughs> Especially when she played Peggy in Heidi High. Which sitcom character do you fancy and why? Well, Mark, it would have to be Baldrick from Blackadder. <laughs> because I have a cunning plan. <laughs> He's a fox. <laughs> and if you don't pick me, you'll feel a right turnip. <laughs> and same again to number two. It would have to be Neil Morrissey who plays Tony in Men Behaving Badly. Because if you pick me tonight, I'll show you just how badly this girl can behave. Oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and to number three. It would have to be Mr. Humphreys from Are You Being Served? And if you're looking for a date, I'm free. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. You are enjoying yourself, aren't you? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Question two. I sell office supplies for a living and am very involved in the new telecommunications revolution. If you needed to get a message to me, which communication system would you use? And that's to number two. Well, Mark, as I'm a student nurse, I'm at the hospital most of the time, so I think what I'd have to do is get one of the secretaries to drop you a line to let you know you're long overdue for an appointment with me. <laughs> and the same question to number three. I'd catch you on the internet, and if you're interested, you can get me at Stall three dot blind date dot tonight. And the same question to number one. Well, Mark, with me being an office manager, it'd have to be by fax. Um, because like me, it's instant, user friendly, and as soon as you see me, you'll want to respond. Mm. <laughs> okay, question three, my last one. Whenever people visit my house, they comment on how full it is of potted plants. I can't help having green fingers. <laughs> What's your house full of? And what does it tell me about you? And that goes to number three. My house is full of cuddly frogs that I kiss every night. Why don't you pick me? Because it'd be a change for me to kiss a prince. <laughs> And the same question to number two. Well, having worked at several hospitals, my house is now full of nurses' uniforms. So, don't be a casualty tonight. Pick me and you'll be saying, Oh, carry on, nurse. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Last one to number one. Well, Mark, my house is full of photographs. So if you snap me up tonight, I'll soon put you in the frame. Oh. They're great, aren't they? They are. Oh, this is the nail-biting bit. It's make your mind up time, Mark. But don't make your mind up just yet, cos who am I gonna call? Graham. Ah, oh, Graham! <laughs> well, now, Mark, will you pick instantly user-friendly number one? The Black Adder fan who's hoping something develops on your date. <laughs> or perhaps you'll go for medical number two, the badly behaved girl who wants you to put yourself in her healing hands. <laughs> or maybe it'll be frog-loving number three, the internet girl who wants to catch a prince in her website tonight. Her decision is yours. Big decision, big decision, because they are all beautiful. I can assure you they're all beautiful. Whoever you go for, you're going to be dead chuffed. I could do with some luck. I'm going to go for number two. Oh. <laughs> I knew it, you know. Did you? So did I. I, I. I was dreaming about it. I know. No, it's not just the number. Your, the way your eyes lit up when she mentioned nurse's uniform. <laughs> I knew you were going for number two, but what about the two beauties that you turned down? First of all, you turned down number three. That was our Froggy from Essex. What a beautiful girl. Come in, Froggy. Also, you turned out number one, how could you, from my hometown in Liverpool? I didn't know. Never mind, she's gone. You turned down Helen, number one, from Liverpool. Come in, Helen. Wow. <laughs> 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 A vision in blue. Oh, send us some scouts down, will you, Helen? Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. Till -bye. all then, Phil. Here she is, your blind date for this evening. You chose number two. That was Michelle from Hertfordshire. Come in, Michelle. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, Michelle. What do you think? Absolutely. <laughs> Where are you going on your blind date? Now, you do know that Jamaica has gone, so that's well out the window. Pardon? We've got Bogner left. I hope not. <laughs> I hope <It'd> be awesome. <laughs> oh, dear. You know, I think you're well matched. Not... I'm not going to make her laugh. <laughs> no way. Oh, you will. <laughs> oh, I love this. Look, I've enjoyed... Sounds like Desert Orchid, doesn't it? <laughs> Who's going to choose where you're going on your blind date? Well, I've been very lucky tonight. I'll, I'll let you choose. What does it say? Oh, she's all excited. Oh. excited. Thank you. Come on, Michelle. <gasps> A trip to Majorca. 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 Have you been to Majorca before? <laughs> Only once. Oh, well, this is Only a good once. time to go. A lovely time. <laughs> You're off to the beautiful island of Mallorca for a date full of sun, sand and sailing. It's an all-action trip. <laughs> <laughs> it's them. It's not me, it's them. Is that a lot, Oh, dear. Um, yes, and you've been mountain biking. <laughs> <laughs> it's like pony trekking, isn't it? But, <laughs> Before we turn, now this bit is good. Before returning to your luxury hotel for a champagne meal and a chance to find love in idyllic surroundings. Is that nice? It's lovely. And can you bring your nurse's uniform with you? Michelle and they spent their date on the lovely island of Mallorca. Come on, 
Michelle? Come on, you. 20. I'll be getting... No, no, come on. Listen, Liz Taylor, come on, we got things to do. <laughs> Well, Liz Taylor, what do you like? <laughs> you stop that laugh. Thank you. <laughs> if only it wasn't for the laugh. <laughs> Ain't no surprise. Just pour me a drink and I'll tell you some lies. Nothing to lose, just singing the blues. Ain't no surprise. Just pour me a drink and I'll tell you some lies. Got nothing to lose, so you just sing the blues all the time. So I'll show you my trick. Okay, ready? What trick is this? Ready? Watch closely. <laughs> oh my god! Definitely picked the right one, didn't I? <laughs> Actually, I've got something to show you as well. <laughs> To you. Oh, not one of your blind, toasts. No, my, my little blind date toast. That's okay. Pick your glass up. <laughs> Wonderful to make it. <laughs> That's a nice, simple one for you. Absolutely. Well, there certainly was plenty of laughter in the Yorker, but. <laughs> yes, there are. But now they're back home. Is love really on the rocks? Let's find out. When the screen went back and I saw Michelle, I was a little bit disappointed. I was really hoping for a brilliant. Um, when the screen first went back, I saw Mark, and he was older than I thought, but I thought, mm, you're OK. When I first heard Michelle's laugh, I looked at the crowd and I looked at Scylla and I thought, what have I done here? <laughs> I thought, this is a big boo-boo time. This is... Hello, this is a mistake. <laughs> After the show, Mark and I went for a meal, and he start, He was really showing off, and he was really quite loud, and I was actually wondering what I'd got myself into. Just before dinner was served, Michelle's leg came over towards mine, and I thought, <laughs> uh-oh, um, I'm not going to put it away, because I'm not going to be nasty, but I thought, yeah, she does, she fancies me. What am I going to do here? <laughs> The next morning when I saw Mark, he came downstairs and he looked gorgeous. And I thought, oh, quite fancy you. And so I was really quite pleased when he put his hand out so we could hold hands as we walked through the airport. On the plane to Mallorca, I thought I'd lay my cards on the table and say, look, I'm sorry, you're a nice girl, but you're not my type. I don't feel any romance for you. Um, she didn't speak to me for an hour after that, and I thought it was actually going quite well up until then. On our first evening in Mallorca, even though Mark had said there was no chance of any romance between us, we actually had a gorgeous snog on the balcony. And I said to Mark I'd make him fall in love with me. He said it was still possible. Rome wasn't built in a day. The reason why I didn't find Michelle attractive was because I normally go for brunettes, um, slimmer girls, and not so tall either. I like them a bit more petite. And the fact that she had this awful laugh as well. <laughs> this laugh put me off, I'm afraid. One other thing about Mark is the fact that I think he would always fancy himself more than he'd ever fancy anybody else. There are two very strange factors with Michelle. Funny but strange. She laughs like a hyena 
and she sneezes like a duck. <laughs> In order for me to become more like Mark's ideal woman, I'd have to change the colour of my hair, change the laugh, and I'm not prepared to change anything about myself for anybody. the bottom of this. I mean, really, you were pulling all the, the punches there, oh, weren't you? Say, you Stella, did your best. In the restaurant on the first evening, I think Mark's leg was touching the table leg. Ooh, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, table legs do not have nylon on them, right? <laughs> it was definitely a leg. I was sitting too far away from Mark to have my leg no next way. to his. You were he not was soaking <clears> the table me. leg. No way. You are not. <laughs> Day, didn't you? You were over there, sun, sand, and lovely weather and everything. But you led her on a bit, more than a bit. No, you I... went in for the kill, you gave her a big snog. No, well, no. We, had the, we had the snog on the Excuse first me. night. Have no, you I'm just done that one? You. It's my turn I'm now, thank you. you. Oh, and I thought what? I was in control there. I thought he does fancy me until the next day, and when he changed his mind and then went hot and cold. Right, you have your say now. I, s I said. <laughs> On the plane, on the plane, I said to you, I put my cards on the table, I said, listen, you are not the type of person that I normally go for, but I will be a gentleman and I will personally look after you and make damn sure that we have a good day without any romance. No, no but I'm sorry. No, I know, I know you're applauding that, but you do not say that on the plane to your destination. You have to hold I... back just a little bit. Yeah, but I've been brought up. If, if I get the feeling yeah. that Michelle fancies me... Yeah. I'm not going to leave it right to the last day and say, by the way, the reason I didn't try anything on was the fact I didn't fancy you. I'm going to say right from the beginning, get everything over and done with, then we can start having a good time. Well, there's a way of saying it. me. That's right. <laughs> the snog was a good night kiss. I, I did say right at the beginning. I said, listen, there, there's no romance going to happen, but we will have a good time. Love. <laughs> I mean, do, do you not think that the laugh just put him off just a wee bit? Do you know what it's like when you're in a restaurant yeah. and then suddenly you hear it? <laughs> <laughs> suddenly everyone looks oh, and, you're, and you're thinking, no, no. <laughs> the first night, the first night, yes. when I said to Michelle, right, OK, I'm going to bed, you can go to your room, I didn't sleep. I promise you, I did not sleep. Because what a wimpo. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I was petrified. She made me so nervous with this... <coughs> <coughs> nervous with this... <laughs> with this laugh. Well, what were you worried about? That she'd come to your room just, and molest you? Just... just <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a nightmare. It's like a nightmare. Well, all right, gang, I'm sure, Miss <laughs> Michelle, there is somebody out there who's going to think you're the best thing since sliced bread. I think you've got a lovely personality, and I can assure you, you will not be forgotten on Blind Date, Michelle. <laughs> I, will, I wish you both well in whatever you do, ladies and gentlemen, Michelle and Mark. Well, that's all we've got time for this week, but we will be back next week to see how Graham and Joe and Yvonne and Rob enjoyed their dates together. And, of course, we'll be arranging some more blind dates, so until then, ta for now. ta everyone. <laughs>